so I started thinking about, you know, the new year, <clears throat> the new year, and we're setting our goals. And hopefully that everybody has some type of technical skill growth on their um, their list. So Microsoft technology is just evolving at a fast pace. You know, this I call it the speedy cloud. And our skills must really stay aligned with the new technology. Dan, I was surprised that you didn't say something about reading up on some documentation for a co-pilot. Um, we are all at different stages in our career and our learning styles are different too. So like for me, give me the book. I want the book. I'm going to read it from page to page where others may like to watch a video or even um, attend a virtual, um, attend a, a course with an instructor. But nevertheless, we do have to keep leveling up our skill sets and Microsoft is making much effort to help us with that journey. So I Sarah, say, Microsoft Learn has it covered. Yeah, Sarah Fenna is here in Miami doing a whole day workshop on Copilot. So to your point about you know Microsoft Learn and the resources we have, and then the people that we meet through this. Sarah was a guest on our show last month. She sends her uh, apologies, but she is actually running the uh, what she called the Copilotathon. Uh, Copilot a thon and uh, coined that term. Mm -hmm. So uh, she's busy right now, but I'm joining you from Miami. So, what I'm going to do over the next couple slides, I'm going to talk about just only two. I did come across a article on tech community that says there's like nine ways that you can keep your skills up, keep building on your skills. And two of them was the Microsoft Applied um, Skills and the Microsoft Certifications. And this was just rolled out last year. So I'm going to kind of talk about what the difference is between the two. So with the Applied Skills, it's a great way to gain industry recognition for a particular you know, technical role. So with the Microsoft certification, it's on a broader scale and I'll talk about that in a little bit, but think about it in this sense, it's gonna verify that you have the necessary knowledge to implement the requested assignment. You know, let's say that you are interested in transitioning into IT, you are already are performing those skills, but you know, for a particular project, but your company is still hesitant, you can actually showcase that you have the skills um, for that role and maybe they can reconsider um, and reconsider. The other thing that you can take advantage of with the apply skills with the assessment, Dan kind of talked about that a little bit. You can actually go through the assessment to understand what your skill gaps are. So you can now turn around and go through all the documentation and get your skills up to level. The, the exams for the Microsoft <clears throat> Applied Skills is free right now. So take advantage of it um, Why it is still free. And I also put in the chat on uh, Frank's profile on LinkedIn, the link to the uh, Microsoft Learn Rooms. Mm -hmm. So the other, you know, besides just learn and uh, curated content or links to instructor led and the certifications, the other thing I'd highlight is uh, Carrie's work with um, the Microsoft Learn Rooms and the Learn Experts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I they they also had mentioned which I wasn't aware of it. They also have a newsletter on LinkedIn called The Spark. So that's available to you as well. There are 19 um, applied skills um, courses. They're focusing around the data analysis, software development, and cloud computing. Um, Microsoft is working on adding some more, so stay tuned for that. But there are at least 19 out there. I saw things like for um, Power Platform, um, Azure Data Scientist and Developer, and Dynamics 365, just to name a few. So. Microsoft certifications, um, again, these are the experts. You're going to find certifications that's relating to fundamentals, associate and expert levels. Um, it, 
has been said that when you get certified that you can potentially see a 15 percent higher salary and um, just expect to spend more time to preparing. I think, Dan, you were talking about that and I can vouch for that as well. Um, I'm on the front end of Microsoft um, Teams. I teach a lot of the end user stuff and I wanted this certification for Microsoft team administrator associate, I think it is, Dan. And um, I got all the questions right when it came to the end user side, but when they start to talk about PowerShell and start talking about, you know, I, I'm familiar with some of the admin um, dashboards, but not all of the policies. So that lets you know right there that you really need to be performing these roles to be able to pass these tests for certifications. There's 84 certifications um, that is available to you. Um, there's uh, uh, many different ones. I mean, um, for um, Microsoft 365, which I'm going to talk about on the next slide, there is stuff around Azure, you know, there's Dynamics 365, PowerPoint, I mean, um, Power Platform. So there's a lot out there to choose from. And they're adding some as well. Not all certifications are geared towards IT developers, coders, administrators. Some certifications are catered to trainers business users and administrative and virtual assistants. I, I wanted this slide here because I do have a, um, a connection with a lot of administrative assistants and virtual assistants. You can get certified and get a, a associate or an expert certification for Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Outlook is coming. They do still have the 2016 and 19 out there. But, you know, in reality, you want to get your Microsoft 365 version um, there. This is not a typo for PowerPoint. You only need the associate. You don't need to take the exam for the expert. And I thought I'll let you know, too, that in the past, you were able to use these certifications towards the MCT certification, and that was deprecated in 2022. So I wanted you to be aware of that. And Teresa, I'd also highlight that the Office or Microsoft 365 exams for the Office Specialist mm -hmm. are very similar to the applied skills where you're given a virtual machine and you're in the actual application and as opposed to like step by step on how you should maybe change an entire slide deck for PowerPoint or format a particular document in Word, you're given those high level tasks and you need to bring those skills of how would I most effectively or, or even the, the old school way change all the slide, uh, slide titles or slide type and font. And if you know the quick way or the efficient way, you can do it that way. You can also do it the uh, the less efficient way on the office exams or Microsoft 365 exams. Um, I, I have a slide to focus on that, too, but I, why it's on my mind, I'm going to say it. But the other thing is, um, like you, Dan, I went through on the plot on the applied skills and try to go through one. Don't do this on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> it was difficult to try true. to drop and drag, you know, I was like, really skip. <laughs> so really try to do this on a computer. You might have better luck on a tablet, but do not try to do it from your handheld phone. I struggled with that yesterday. And uh, just one other tip there for that, Teresa, is they actually give the course, you know, for the actual applied skill so don't just dive in and try and do it yeah you know yeah. do the actual course on on the actual stuff first because there will be stuff come up on it that mm -hmm. you would not have seen before you know because everything is new mm -hmm. yeah so um, new certifications, I wanted, um, I, I, you know, found a lot of this information on tech community, you know, please um, subscribe to that form if you're interested and want to um, stay on top of what's new, but there, there is a new um, certification 
Fabric Analytics Engineering DP600. It is replacing the DP500. And visit um, Tech Community again because there is a discount that they're offering for the beta exam. There was one that they announced it and then shortly, like within a matter of days, um, it was free. But I think, um, you know, they're charging now. But take a look at the details for... Um, this new certification. So a couple retirements, the DP500 is gonna be retiring um, just because it's been replaced with DP600 um, and that's happening on April the 30th of this year. And on June 30th, that they're actually retiring the PL100 Power Platform App Maker. And cause it's now part of the Applied Skills. So it's going to be moved there instead. With the exams, most exams, you have to have a passing score of 700. And we were talking about some of the question formats. You're going to see best answers, active skills, a build list that drop and, drop and drag that you don't want to do on your phone from a computer instead. They also have case studies. So again, you... It's not something that you can just jump in and I'm going to just take it and, and, and get that badge or get that acknowledgement. You do have to really study and really think through because the case studies like, OK, here's the scenario. Now, what would you do for, you know, to answer this question? And um, so you have to really think it through and really know the content, not just reading through and thinking you're going to do a multiple choice um, test. <laughs> so um, it's really um, it's, it, it's a really good because, like I said, I had to walk away of trying to do that Microsoft Teams administrator because I don't know um, PowerShell. And I'm and I don't have any interest in it really. So um, that's just my example and experience. Here are some resources. Um, Dan and Frank, one of us, we will make sure that you have this information in the comments below. But take a look at it. I am going to do a quick little demo and get you there. But you guys know me by now. And I like to give you, you know, cheer you on with your Microsoft learning and certification journey. You got this. Go work your magic. <laughs> so let me jump over. Okay. So I went to learn.microsoft.com. Notice that I already have a profile. It keeps track of my learning. I missed um, the first year. So be careful on what email address you want to be associated with because I was under my previous employer and I had a lot of you know points there that I could not transfer over. So really think about what email address that you want to have associated with your account. Um, I did want to show you customizing um, your path. If you click on this, you could actually just walk through here and identify, you know, where you are in your learning journal um, journey and go through all the prompts. I won't go through it, but um, go through all these prompts and it start to suggest what um, documentation and what information you should follow. <clears throat> Before I get into the um, some of the um, the documentation, I just want to walk through here under the credentials. You'll see, you know, all the different applications. There's Q and A. I was surprised to see that they even had some code samples here for folks to use. This is where you would find the assessment. They just recently added this because I believe. You know, in October time frame, I couldn't find this. So they now have it here at the top. And the other thing is you may want to watch shows. They have a lot of virtual training um, that they offer. It could be a whole day or two day training session to walk you through. So make sure kind of browse through here if you have not had a chance to look at this content. 
let me go back to documentation. Okay. I hope that's not where I want to go. Training. Here we go. Browse all training. So again, you just kind of scroll through here and based on what product you want, what role, you know, your, your, um, your level and down here at the bottom, I wanted to make sure I show you that they had the learning path in the modules. Um, this is a little different because I remember it was on a page where it actually had, um, a, you could choose applied versus um, certifications. And let me see if I can get there. Here we go. There we go. So you can choose which one you want, even down to the exams. And the reason why I wanted you to show you the exams, because if you click on one, it lets you know what the criteria and what to expect and what you should know. And, um, and then the documentations will walk you through each one of these as well. Anything you guys want to add, Frank or Dan? Yeah, I'll kind of go through a small bit on, um, on Microsoft Learn there when you're finished those slides, Teresa. Okay. Um, Wanted to jump over to the Microsoft Learning blog post. Um, if you go to Tech Community and you end up on their homepage, you can choose the Community Hub and um, do a search for um, Microsoft Learn, and it would take you here. Um, I this was my first time actually coming out here, and I actually read some of these articles. They they are really. Um, something really nice. That's where I came across the one that says there's nine ways to um, upskill. So take a look at content here as well. Yeah, nine ways Microsoft Learning helps you with your skills. So take a look at that article. I thought it was really good. Frank, you said you had a couple things to share. Yeah. I'm happy to just, share if we yeah, have time. But. Just, yeah, just to expand a bit there on um, what Teresa was saying about the Microsoft Learn. So the, the actual platform, the Microsoft platform is a uh, Learn platform is huge. So first of all, have a look for Microsoft Learn and you land on the platform there like um, Teresa was showing you. We've got 4,794 results up here. So to break it down to what you want. So like I kind of focus more around the Azure stuff recently in the last year or so. So if you want to get into the Azure space, right? You just go over here, tick in the box Azure. And most people, I tell them, look, do the fundamentals first, you know, learn to walk before you can run. Right. So tick the box and you see the results are coming down up to 850. So we scroll on down the page and we're looking at beginners, right? So we want to get the fundamentals. So you tick that box. And as Teresa was saying there earlier, if you wanted a course or learning path, um, you can tick the box down here. So we can click on the learning path and it reduces down to 58. So I'm just going to hit on this box up here because it's showing all the ones that I have. So it brings the results down. And just one sec now. So we kind of want to focus on infrastructure. It's still showing some of this stuff. I just take that one off there now again, sorry. So if you're going to start off with um, the fundamentals anyway of Azure. So tick all those boxes, administrator, um, beginner. So I'll just take this one off again and we hit modules and see what we get. The AZ 
900 so we go courses there we go so like if you're going to start off this is where you want to start off as your fundamentals um so you just tick all the boxes and then you end up with this one so we'll just click into it so at a glance is for beginners administrator role and um, just gives you the overview so like these are you can see i actually done this one so there's actually eight units in the fundamentals you just do all those ones so um click on one of the modules um because you'll see it'll tell you exactly how long it's going to take you to complete that module you actually um they how long the the module is um, you will have a question at the end of each one of these as well. There, some of these um, may redirect you to additional documentation. Um, I find it helpful to read those documentations because they wouldn't have those linked there um, if they didn't want you to take a look at that documentation. So some, I didn't want people to think that, you know, um, if they don't, should they skip it? And, and sometimes they send you a link to a video um, I encourage you to watch it because you never know what's going to be on the exam. And at least you know that, hey, I covered it all. Sometimes so that that if it says 25 minutes might even be longer if they have a lot of links that is um, you know included in some of the modules. Yeah, so that, that's the kind of fundamentals one there. Um, and one other good thing about um, the Microsoft Learn platform, all the learning you do, it actually, if you can see up on the right-hand side there, gives me level 13. Um, it actually took me probably seven years to get up to this. So that's a lot of stuff. So I'll just click on my profile just to give people an idea like this is all free mm -hmm. microsoft gives you and um okay so that number earlier the 39 Teresa, i was saying that was these ones you see the trophies mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that was where i got the 39 number but they're not certifications i got them confused with the certifications so the certification ones I have, <laughs> 40. Yeah, but the, these ones here, can you see the screen here? Yeah, these, yeah those are the actual are the, certifications. Like this one that then on here, the Azure certified, the AWS certified cloud practitioner. I've done that, I think about two years ago. But, it's totally different than Azure. And like then I didn't continue any further with it. I stayed with the Azure stuff. So, so to get the, after that one, I got the Microsoft Certified Administrator Associate. So this, to get this one, uh, the prerequisite to get to the Azure Solutions Architect, you have to get the administrator first, and then had to do the AZ three hundred and the AZ three hundred one. So the two of these will actually get you the solutions architect. I think it's changed now. Then is it gone to the AZ five hundred? I believe so. Yeah, yeah, there there are pages that explain all those relationships as well. For the yeah. like the expert sometimes it's one exam sometimes it's a combination of exams yeah um and what is the cost i know that <clears throat> for the microsoft 365 the office suites many of those exams were right at 99 dollars um us and um for some of the azure and teams um certifications what do they run I think in US it's $165 if you don't have any discounts. Um, some training providers will provide vouchers, you know, as part of taking classes. Um, I have seen some discounts that are offered at various events, or you know, Microsoft occasionally will have discounts available as well. For for me, even taking exams, there's one location that I would have to probably drive about an hour away. 
um, to take the exam and they charge additional $25 per exam uh, for setup fee. And so I'm trying to figure out how can I connect with another um, um, agency to take the test. So I don't, you know, they may even still charge the $25, but just to expect that you may have to um, pay a um, setup fee. Teresa, I think that's, do, that has nothing to do with Microsoft. That's the, that company that right. on their own making their making their money. <clears throat> I think that's specific to the office exams. I had that same experience where there was the cost to schedule it either virtually. I've done one from home mm -hmm. and I did all my others at a uh, training facility really? and the training facility on top of purchasing the voucher mm -hmm. from Microsoft or from Certiport, I think is where I took mine from online or scheduled them. Mm -hmm. I also owed the, uh, the training facility that facilitated me to take the exam. I haven't seen that with the other exams. Frank, I don't know if you've ever seen that, like a, a charge from the facility. Before Frank answered that, uh, I share, I asked the, the training facility, I said, I, can I come? And I was just going to take them all in one day, right? So, you know, they all about an hour. Yeah. I'm going to just knock yeah. them all out. And she said, yes, and we're going to charge you $25 for each one. <laughs> yeah. No so. discount for multiple. So. <laughs> No, like um, here in Ireland, it's um, it's different. Um, we have these centers all over the, the country. Um, so once you go to, is it um, Pearson View? Is that what mm -hmm. you use in the States? So yep. you sign up, sign up to Pearson View and you book your exam. <clears throat> And you just turn up at the center and there's no order charge. Okay. Yeah, that's how uh that's how Pearson View was for the for the non-office exams here as well. So they're $165 not discounted. Um, so you might be able to get find a discount through either training provider or some other, you know, Microsoft offers or something. Um, but then once you find the discounts. I was I was never charged to take the exams other than office. The office exams, I think, are maybe either a, a different legacy agreement with the training centers. And I think you could even apply to be a training center. I knew somebody that uh, now works for Microsoft that was a certified training center for office. And I think there was a minimum number of vouchers that uh, were required to be purchased. Mm -hmm. But then she could set like the fee for um you know administrating the exam essentially so that could be you know 20 25 dollars i think is pretty typical mm -hmm. um but i guess you I, I think that's up to you you could go higher or lower I, uh, I potentially would, i would also mention for the mvps i think that's part of one of the perks that you get a discount um voucher i don't think that's a hundred percent i think that's a discount voucher yeah, that's like the MCT one. You get 70% you know, off, is that right? I'm sorry. Well, you know what we didn't talk about? We didn't talk about the renewal process. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, that's super important. So there we go. Microsoft offers a free and convenient annual certification renewal process. I have heard firsthand from one of my coworkers at Smarter Consulting that uh, you don't want to leave this till the day of that certification renewal expiration uh, because midnight your time zone isn't necessarily midnight microsoft's mm. selected time zone so she was i believe during the exam found out that it had expired mm. uh, while taking the certification renewal but these are free they are not required for the um the fundamentals exams so for instance carrie uh mentioned in the chat that he's looking at the um, artificial intelligence fundamentals, I believe. That exam, once you've passed it, AI fundamentals, AI 900, is not an exam that you have to recertify or renew. Mm -hmm. However, um, I, I went through the process of renewing my MS 700, Teresa, the exam we were talking about, managing Microsoft Teams. Mm -hmm. 
And it was 50 questions. It was completely free. I don't believe it was timed that I saw any kind of time restriction. Um, and it was essentially like an open book because I was on my computer. I could use other materials to look things up, to validate that I felt an answer was correct. And then uh, I couldn't go back. So on a real exam, you can actually mark to go back to things that you want to review again. And um, the renewal process is something you can do more than once. I know for, I know if you had others. for the office um, you know, exams, it is timed. You have yes. an hour to get them done. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm just also curious too, um, I guess I should have fact checked it, that um, some certifications may be good for two years. Some of them may require to be uh, renewed every year. So um, again, just look at the documentation um, for the exam and um, it, it should tell you. Yeah. I think it's under are credentials. You renewing, are you renewing every year for some of these certifications? I I have hit the annual yeah. renewal. So you see, see in the middle there, then we're just go Thank back. You. Again. Is it, just go back. Is it under credentials? No, there. See there now. Yeah, certifications. Yeah. Yeah, and here's yeah. my renewals. Yeah. So for my certified collaborate collaboration communication systems engineer associate which is the other side of Microsoft Teams, you'll notice I have a renewal button here. Yeah. And that renew takes me to before May uh, 30th. So I don't want to leave this till um, May 30th of 2024 <laughs> uh, or May 31st, I guess. I don't want to play around with the UTC time uh, frame of uh, almost eight o'clock. But I can renew this, and it's typically 50 questions. You can take the questions, and then you get another set of questions if you don't pass the renewal the first time. And then I believe it's if you try it twice, they impose, I believe it's a 24-hour period. So you're not just going through the renewal questions and, um, I guess, trying to game the system or, or document all the renewal questions. But I can't show you the renewal questions on our session today. Okay, so we are at the top of the hour. Just want to thank everyone for joining us today and have a great um, February 2024.